Okay, check this out. Let me know if this sounds familiar. We're out in San Diego Bay fishing. Oh, we're doing pretty good on the bass with some big hammers out there. Everything's going good. The uh, water temp is beautiful. Uh, space calm. Everything's looking good. We're catching fish. Afternoon comes along. Gets a little rougher out there for you, those of you that know San Diego Bay. So we decide, uh, let's get out of here. Let's head for home. I turn the switch. Everything starts fine. Motor's purring like a kitten. We're happy as pigs in mud heading home. Boom! The uh, alarm goes off. Beep, 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 beep. I figure, well, you know, as long as it's pissing water, as long as the oil looks good, I'm golden. So I get home. I YouTube some videos on the oil alarms. This guy pops up. B. Shaw Creative. Now, he's got a good video on there. Tells you exactly what's going on and how to fix it. He said his, uh, he didn't have a uh, tripod for his camera, so he couldn't show you how exactly he fixed it. He just showed you the beginning and the end result, which is cool. I can work with that. I figured I got a tripod. Let's give this a shot. So I'm going to add to his video, which was very good, and uh, see if we can't help you YouTubers out. So first thing, a couple tools you're going to need. 8 millimeter socket. I don't necessarily need an extension. Some long 15 inch needle nose, or uh, should say vice grips. A flat head. Uh, 22 inches, the one I got, 499 at uh, Harbor Freight, came with a Phillips that length. Some seal all, critical thing is gas and oil resistant. And last but not least, a pair of dikes, which I will use at the end. But the main tools, uh, vice grips, nine bucks at Harbor, and the flathead. Now, when you stick that flathead in there, what you got to do, once you drain your oil reservoir, look in there and find the float. It's held in by a little clip right there. The flathead I got. Which is being, you know, anything that long is going to be kind of big. It didn't fit in the uh, in the grooves, so uh, you got to modify it. Some people have a different term for it. I call it modifying. You can always put it back, but uh, what I got to do here is uh, basically uh, is just take it down, make it a little narrower on the uh, sander there, and then uh, I want to put an edge on it. So I'm going to file it down to what I think will fit in the groove. I'm going to put it on an anvil. And uh, while it's uh, slightly warm on the tip there, I'm going to tap just a little hook in it. I'm hoping that that's going to make it just a little bit easier to get that uh, clip off. Now I'm pretty sure a uh, little tip like that, a little narrow tip like that should fit in there pretty good. Now it's tough to get in there. Uh, with a camera taking up most of the room, so might be a little out of focus at times. I uh, might veer off and uh, not show you exactly what's going on, uh, but I'm gonna give it a shot here. Basically, what you want to do is pry those little tabs back. There's a ring, a little recessed ring on the inner side of that plastic that all those tabs sit inside. Basically, all you want to do is get those tabs pried out away from that ring. Uh, it was a lot easier than I thought. You can see the thing's getting looser and looser until finally, boom, it just comes off. Sticks to the uh, tip of the screwdriver, which yeah, happens to be magnetic. That's a plus. Get me from having to fish it out, but I can get it out of either way. And take that out of there. And then uh, the rest of the... Uh, the float in the magnet, you just simply take your uh, oil reservoir and just dump them out. Once you got that in your hand, you can see this one looks like the magnet's stuck to it, but it's not. You know, it's just the oil sticking the magnet to the float. See, it's right there, it's free. It's got a little bit of a residue on it from oil. Um, same thing with the float. Uh, there's no way any adhesive is going to stick to that, so i got to clean it up pretty good. Um, 
you can see a little bit of the adhesive from the original Merc glue on there, but not much. Anyway, so I'm going to take the float. I'm going to take the uh, magnet. And I'm just going to try to get as much oil out of there as I can. Basically, uh, just wiping it down is not going to do it. I didn't want to use a chemical to clean it, so I figured, hey, you know, I'll just take a little layer off. So I laid some sandpaper down. I could have probably gone with a finer grit, but I'm not going to rub all that hard to begin with. Just enough to take off, you know, any oil that might be soaked into that float. Get it down, get it nice and clean, nice and dry. Once you've got the uh, float as to what you would consider perfectly clean, um, dry it off, and uh, we'll, work, we'll work on the adhesive on that later. But then you got to get the magnet too. You can't have uh, one side oily and the other side clean, so I'm going to rub the magnet on there a little bit. It's got to get a rough texture to it too. Anything rough always helps adhesive stick anyway. So, get the last of the residue out of there. Wipe it down. Take a good look at it. Make sure you know it's clean. You don't want to have to do this twice, even though it is easy. Uh, Mercury says uh, you can't be fixed. You know, when the oil alarm goes off, you got to get a new oil tank. Well, you know, B. Shaw Creative proved that... Uh, to be wrong and uh, I'm just gonna try to uh, see if I can do it too I mean he, he put it together seemed to work pretty good uh, so I'm gonna give it a shot too it doesn't cost you anything man I mean you're looking at zero parts all you need is a couple tools and some glue once we got the two surfaces clean I'm gonna whip out my uh, glue here that I picked to uh, to do this job and it's a sealant adhesive. I had some, so I figured I'm going to use that. It came out kind of like model glue. You know, it's, it, it, uh, it wasn't real gooey, but it did dry kind of fast. So as I'm spreading it out around here, it's already creating a little bit of a film. Now on the instructions of that thing, it said if you're going to use it as an adhesive, you have to... Uh, Put the glue on both surfaces and let it set up to tackiness. Once it gets tacky, you can stick the two surfaces together. I don't want it really thick, so I'm going to wipe it down, kind of flatten it out a little bit with my finger. And then uh, I'm going to set that aside, let that puppy set for a few minutes while I uh, work on the uh, float. Now the float some kind of really dense, spongy material. Um, and, uh, you know, it went on really easy on that. So I'm going to set that on there. I'm going to spread that out as well. Um, I want to make sure since I did rough up the edge of that, uh, float that I spread the glue all the way edge to edge so that it can act as a sealant as well. I don't want any oil getting underneath, uh, the, the magnet and uh, having it fall off so I'm going to do the best I can to kind of spread that out and then uh, once they tack up then I'm going to stick them together now the uh, protrusion on the oil tank uh, is a lot smaller well I wouldn't say a lot it's a smaller diameter than what you see on the float so if my magnet's not perfect I got some breathing room in there now I'm going to take the sealant and go around the outer edge, kind of make uh, make an airtight seal on that, just so nothing gets in between there. I don't have any gaps in there, and it'll it'll kind of it'll kind of shoehorn the uh, magnet into the same spot and keep it from drifting side to side. If the uh, adhesive underneath does happen to come loose, then at least I got a little bit of this stuff on the side as well, and uh, I put a pretty fair amount on there. You don't want to get any on the magnet. Um, you can kind of keep that kind of clean, kind of flat. And uh, check it out. You can see the shiny part on the magnet. Just wipe the adhesive off of that before it gets too too tacky, too dry. And uh, once you think you got that magnet cleaned up enough, well, 
you let it dry overnight. I'm gonna let that puppy dry overnight just to make sure I got a really good seal. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this uh, little clip here, bend it back into position. Uh, when you pull it off, it doesn't really warp it that much, you know. You just bend the teeth inward a little bit so that uh, the diameter of the circle is smaller. So when you press it on, it'll dig back into that initial groove in the uh, oil tank. No problems there. Put a dowel or a uh, something circular that the float fits over. I used uh, the handle of a mirror and drop it back on your oil tank once you feel your adhesive is good and dry you can see the gap at the bottom there so it's not a super tight fit so if you don't get your magnet perfect i'm sure it's going to work either way now is where you take the 15 inch 9.99 needle no or needle no i don't keep calling them needle nose vice grips at harbor freight pinch them over the uh, clip without bending it and lock them so they don't pop out and snap, simply snap it onto the post. That went on a piece of cake. It snapped on what seemed to be good and snug. Now I'm going to take the other end of that mirror and uh, go in there and have a look. Make sure it's it's the teeth dug into that groove. Looking at all the sides over there, I can see pretty good with that mirror all the way around. There's the the groove right there in that shot teeth went back in I'm gonna I'm gonna take the hook end of that uh, flathead that I got stick it in there poke it around a little bit see if it spins around as freely as it did before see if it bows down and then I'm gonna try to pull on it a little bit good nice and snug right there shouldn't have a problem with that there's not a lot of pressure on that float pushing up yeah it's gonna push up just due to the oil floating it but I don't see that being a problem. That seems nice and snug. Now I'm going to take the hood off my 40 horse Merc, stick the oil container back in that little rubber boot that it fits in, and uh, basically connect up the wiring to the back. You've got, uh, it was real simple, two blue wires. I didn't know which one was which uh, or if they made a difference, so I marked them. You can see the one there has a uh, little black magic marker mark on the boot. First one I pull out of the engine there in the back. Boom, right there, right up front. It's got that black mark. Cool. Now I know those two went together and it worked like that before. I'll stick it back together just like that. There's only two wires clipping together. Little butt splices. Push it back in, tuck everything up nice and tight, and uh, then I should be able to mount the uh, the uh, oil line to the underside of the uh, oil tank. I'm going to lean the oil tank forward, and you can see the line right there by the starter. It's just kind of wedged up in there vertically. I'm going to pull it out of there. That's all I did when I disconnected it was just pull it out of there, stick it up against there so it wouldn't leak. Shove it all the way onto that little nipple there. And that was a fairly tight fit, but you know, hey, a little added security with a zip tie sure is not going to hurt anything as long as it sits back in the little rubber boot that, you know, it was meant to sit in which uh, zip tie is not going to take up much space. There's a little recess right there. I'm going to pull this little zip tie tight. I'm going to whip out my Harbor Freight zip tie stretcher slash snippers. And uh, they apparently were uh, not up to the job for uh, clipping this. So I stretched it nice and tight felt like yeah that's pretty good it's not going any tighter but the thing can't clip it normally when you pull it that last pull of the trigger it also utilizes a snipper on the end of that cuts it for you but that's a pretty good zip tie right there pretty thick so you get your handy dandy uh, Irwin Dykes snip that puppy now I'm pretty sure that oil line will never pop off on me but I can get it off if I need to 
Now I'm going to mount the top mount and the lid for the oil tank. That also acts as the bracket that combines the oil tank to the motor. Now there's a nut on the uh, underside of each one of those bolts. So you want to make sure to put the nuts back. Don't tighten them down, just get the nuts started on each one of them. And uh, once you're positive, you're threaded on both nuts. Uh, snug them up, and then, uh, and then you can tighten it down. So I got these puppies snugged up. Now I'm going to go down and tighten it down that little remaining bit. Until I'm positive, everything's snug on there, nice and tight. It's not going to come loose. And uh, now it's time to put some oil in that puppy. I got a uh, terry cloth because I drained the oil into a pitcher and uh, kind of covered it. But just in case any dust or any dirt or any sand or whatever got my oil, I'm going to reuse the oil that was in that tank. Uh, when the alarm went off, I put oil in it just to make sure. I knew I was about a quarter to half way up on the tank, but I put another quart in it just to make sure. And uh, now you take the pitcher. I'm going to drop that pitcher into the, uh, actually I should say drain that pitcher into the terry cloth and let it uh, kind of filter that oil back into the tank. The old lady's lemonade might taste a little funky for the next three weeks, but you know, hey, after I get done dumping this oil out, I'll throw a little degreaser in that pitcher. You won't, uh, you won't taste a thing. Once you get your... Uh, you know, oil tank filled back up, put the cap back on, twist it nice and tight, job's almost done. Now it's a simple matter of uh, putting the cover back on, of course that's usually never a simple matter, it's the hardest part of the whole job is getting this little hook up front lined up, pull in try doing that if you ever have to take your cover off when you're out in the bay and it's getting slightly rough that's a pretty tough job right there anyway you get your cover back on snap that puppy into place come on Bessie get in there boom done snap the underside lock it and this job is done oil alarm off and you're set for some fishing out in the bay again. YouTubers, I hope this helped you out.